everything that, let everything that, everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that, everything that, let everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Praise you in the morning, praise you in the evening, praise you when I'm young and when I'm old. Praise you when I'm laughing, praise you when I'm grieving, praise you every season of the soul. If we could see how much you're worth, your power, your might, your endless love, surely we would never cease to pray. Praise you in the heavens, joining with the angels, praising you forever and a day. Praise you on the earth now, joining with creation, calling all the nations to your praise. If they could see how much you're worth, your power, your might, your endless love, then surely they would never cease to praise. All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to worship here at Flame of Faith United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Sarah McManus, and I'm excited to gather together with you. It is, uh, Jansen has taken uh, some time of vacation, and so we have his wonderful pre-recorded singing, uh, but you are going to have to deal with me praying tonight instead of him. But we are gathered, uh, if you would like our order of worship, you can find it online, flameoffaithumc.org. You can find, find a copy of it in the hallway, uh, or you can find a, uh, did, or a visual order of worship in the pew in front of you. Here in the sanctuary, we invite you to sign in in our clipboards. Uh, they're in the center aisle. You can pass them down. And uh, let us know that you're here, we, how we can pray for you. Or you can tell me about it after worship, that works too. Uh, our online check-in uh, is underneath the YouTube, the link is underneath the YouTube uh, video. If you want to uh, check in online, you can also do so on our Facebook page. But now let us turn to God in a time of prayer. Prayer, we will start with a, a silent prayer, and then I will continue with a pastoral prayer, and we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. Now, the Lord's Prayer that we do on Wednesday nights is a little different than a lot of traditional versions. Um, so there's going to be one version on the screen, and I'm going to read that one. But if you prefer to use a different version, whether here in the sanctuary or at home, pray as, uh, as you connect to God best. So let us begin with a time of silent prayer.
heavenly and gracious God. We come to you in our worship with the knowledge that in the midst of our struggles in life, from illness to the world around us to the events that affect us, we know that we come to you sometimes broken, sometimes whole, most often somewhere in between. And so we come as your created people to sing praise and to hear your voice. Guide us this day and always as we pray together the prayer that Christ taught us. Our God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Even I mess it up when I am staring at the words and still read it wrong. That's all right. During our offering time today, I invite you, if you want to give online, you can do so uh, through our Vanco app or um, online. Uh, Teddy, you want to walk around with this? Here in the sanctuary, we've got plates going around. Otherwise, many give through the mail and um, are a part of that. All right. Thank you. Well, let us pray over this. Will you hold on to it while we pray? Heavenly God, we thank you for the gifts of our lives. We thank you for the ways that you give us the desire to give back to you and to the world around us. Bless these gifts. Bless our gifts of time, of talent. Bless our gifts of service and listening that we may use those gifts in the world. Amen. All right, thank you, Teddy. Our next song is God of Wonders. Uh, I invite you to sing loudly and join in. Yeah. 
heart to me Father hold me hold me the universe declares your majesty you are holy 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 hallelujah to the lord of heaven and earth 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 amen Thank you to uh, Billy and Jansen uh, from afar joining us and uh, helping us with our music tonight. A couple of announcements before we get too far in our uh, series. We are getting closer and closer to our retreat, which means we are getting closer and closer to when you need to sign up by. Not pointing at anyone in particular. Uh, next, not this Friday, but next Friday and Saturday, we will be gathering, heading over to Wesley Acres Camp for a time of renewal, a time of prayer, and a time of discernment or discovery uh, together with God. We've got about four people signed up right now, so there's plenty of room. I'm getting glared at by one in particular here in the sanctuary, and that's okay, because I'm glaring back at her. Other, uh, in two weeks, we will have our last outdoor worship of the summer. On August 24th, we're going to have kind of our kick up, kick off and sign up for Flame Kids. We're going to have uh, a chance for you to take a photo for our directory. Um, now, these are not going to be professional photos, but they will be pretty cool. We'll have a little area and all of that. We'll have food. We'll have worship. Uh, we'll have a lot of fun on uh, October on August 24th. You can also, as we continue uh, looking into the fall and all of our activities kind of kicking off, we have lots of places that you can sign up to volunteer and get connected from uh, attending. Uh, those of you who join us online, you can be a, a digital usher, someone who uh, welcomes and connects with uh, folks online, uh, especially uh, for those who might be joining us for the first time, uh, be able to answer questions, um, pray together, that kind of thing. Otherwise, uh, help with the tech, help with confirmation, youth group, flame kids, adults, uh, Bible study, there's all kinds of ways to plug in. Uh, if there's something that you have been feeling called to do and I've not mentioned it, come talk to me. Let's, let's figure it out. Um, there are always ways to get connected and uh, plugged in, as we have written down there. All right. So uh, we continue in our third week of the Book of the Psalms. Uh, I, think, I think about how much, um, how much the words of each people in, in each psalm are an expression about what we know about God. You know, there are 150 psalms, and each of them tells us a different story about God. Last week, as we spoke about the forgiveness and mercy of God, even in the face of David's incredible sin, and, um, you know, I admitted that God's incredible mercy can be unsettling sometimes and beyond our understanding uh, it turns out that there's lots of God, about God that is bigger than us. The great multitude of God, the unexplainable nature of God, or to use a super fancy word, and I forgot to get this on the screen, the ineffable, which is, it's basically a definition is unspeakable. It's a fancy old word, nature of God. This foundation tells us that God is bigger than we can understand. And then that is the very nature of our next set of psalms. So today we're going to talk about the psalms of creation. 
Like the stories in Genesis are there to tell us the story of God in the world around us. So our scripture today comes from Psalm 29. A Psalm of David. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Here ends the reading. Now, when describing God, there are often two directions that people follow. There's the personal. This is Jesus walking in the garden. You know, I come to the garden alone, and he walks with me, and he, I don't know, the talks with me. Somebody else, I need Jansen here to sing when I have random. Yeah, Bernadette, come here, sing the song quick. But this song, this this idea is reflected throughout the Old Testament. You've got the stories of Adam and Eve in the garden. You've got Enoch walking with God, and Enoch was with God, and you have Moses on the mountain. And then you have in the life of Jesus, we have the personal relational moments of God. And next comes the influx of the Holy Spirit in which the personal becomes internal. Not just God beside me, but God within me. And the other direction that we have is the awe-inspiring moments of God, the grandness of creation. This is our, our summer VBS theme, focused on the beauty of God's great, grand creation, the stars that are numbered beyond what we can imagine. This is God that we find, I'll see, yes, yes. In this photo, recent photo from the James Webb telescope, the beauty of God beyond what we can imagine. There's more to all of this than we could ever understand, although we will try. We'll continue to search and to look and to read and to learn. And that's where the Psalms of creation come in. To us on the plains, We often see the beauty of God in the colors of sunset, the colors of creation, the sunsets and sunrises best seen in the vast vast expanse of prairie. Yeah, sunsets and such are pretty in mountains, but nah, give me an open plains, driving across. The Psalms of creation include many descriptions of God. So these are some of the other Psalms of creation. Like I have said, Each focus we have in the book of Psalms has multiple psalms that are like it. So this is Psalm 33. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He puts them in storehouses. And then there's Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it the world and those who live in it, for he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. And then from Psalm 102, long ago you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you endure. They will wear out like a garment. You change them like clothing and they pass away, but you are the same and your years have no end. The very nature of the psalm lends to these moments. If you are seeking to tell the story of God, telling the power, majesty, and bigness of God is important. So our focus for today is the story of God 
in the storm. We know of Christ calming the storm, and when we hear that, we remember the God of creation calming the chaos of creation, holding the waters back and separating the seas. I don't know if you can notice in a specific theme in our Psalms here, but water and the control of water seems to be a big deal for the Psalms. Now, the Israelites lived in a desert that had flash flooding. I can't imagine why this would be a big focus for them. These Psalms are meant not only as descriptions of the world around us, but examples of the ways that God shows up in our lives. Now, many of you know that one of the foundational explanations of my own understanding of God is wound up in the last words of John Wesley, because I'm a giant dork and because John was right. The best of all is God is with us. This is the same idea. God is here. Now, here in our sanctuary, here in our homes and cars and our vacations and wherever we are, God is here. So how does God show up? How do we notice God? God shows up in the storm and the calming of the storm. God is the storm bringer. Oh wait, that's storm breaker. Not that one, of course, but an important note, not that the psalmist had encountered the Norse god of thunder, but the psalmist had definitely encountered the Canaanite god of storms, Baal. And so we have a connection weirdly to the Canaanite version of Thor in this scripture. And so not only is this psalm telling the story of God, our God, the God of all creation, but also reminding us and the world around us that God is bigger, better, and far more powerful than the puny gods of the ancient world. Hulk smashing Loki, puny god. It's funny if you know the movies. So the question the psalmist is asking and answering here is this. Where does God show up? God shows up in all of the... They are all just looking at me like I'm really bad at telling jokes. I assume you all at home are laughing uproariously. I got one. God, where does God show up? God is bigger than Marvel. God is bigger than all the devastation the world can muster. The storms, the flood, the trees, like a grove of redwoods, vast and ancient, the cedars of Lebanon. The best explanation I have for that is like the redwood wood groves, the mariposa grove that we all know and are worried about <laughs> currently in the midst of fire. The other Psalms, they mention uh, the acts of creation, the foundations of the earth, the flows of the rivers and the stopping up of the seas. These are the life and death of the people of ancient Palestine, Egypt, and the rest of the Middle East. The waters of chaos and creation, the waters of life and the storms that could end it. We here in North Dakota, we know the cycles of wonder, of drought and flood that are the workings that affected the ancient Israelites and that we understand as well. And God is present in them. Even in the destructive ones, this God of ours is not a tame God. Now this concept shows up in C.S. Lewis' famous allegory for Christianity, the Chronicles of Narnia. Little child hanging out in Narnia for the first time, Lucy asks, is he safe? The beaver says, safe? Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he's good. He's the king, I tell you. Mr. Tumnus, the fawn, also says, he's wild, you know, not a tame lion. This is the God that is unsettling, the God that is there, and we are not in control. So where does God show up in our world? We know the beauty and danger of creation and the cycles of weather, drought, and flood, heat, and cold, just as the ancient Israelites did. 
We see the beauty and danger of God in the ways that nature continues to overwhelm what we build up. We see the beauty and danger of God in the beauty of time and space present in this photo. We see the beauty and wonder of God in the simple actions of growth in plants, in the adaptation of animals and ecosystems. These psalms of creation not only speak of the physical realities around us, but the deep understanding that God is found through faith. The Lord is my shepherd, I am not. The Lord is my shepherd, not some storm. God watches over the chaos and is in charge. The Lord is my shepherd. It's even in the beginning line of today's psalm, assigned to the Lord, O heavenly beings. This is not (laughs) a psalm written to you and to me, but to the gods of old. This is a psalm written to Thor, basically. God saying, I have the power and you don't. This is a reminder that the world around us, the powers of this world are nothing compared to the power of God. If we were to rewrite a psalm of creation for our world today, it would go something like this. Pay attention, you celebrities and politicians, you people in charge. Do you command the storms to grow with a breath of hot air? Does your voice change the atmosphere? Are your towers and cities bigger than the voice of God? This God of ours sets the nations aside with the ease of a child's toy. This God of ours sits above the fray and watches. Protect us, O God. Strengthen your people. Bless your people. You alone are our God. You see, these psalms are as much a petition, an invitation to God. God, do you remember when you ordered the chaos? Could you maybe do that again a little bit right now? Do you remember our need in the midst of our current chaos? These descriptions of God are also a request for God to do the same. Lord, we need a shepherd. Guide us. Intervene for us. Strengthen us. It sounds a whole lot like the prayers we pray on a regular basis. So I challenge you this week. What are the challenges, the struggles, the ways that you are desperate for God to intervene? Write God a prayer. Sing God a song. Focus on the ways that God's creation shows you the truth of who God is and honestly ask God, God, can you help? And so to practice that, I'm going to invite you all to pray with me our new psalm. I just read it to you. It'll be on the screens. To pray with me, whether aloud or in the silence, our psalm of creation. Pay attention, you celebrities and politicians, you people in control. You think you control the world, and yet... Do you command the storms to grow with a breath of hot air? Does your voice change the atmosphere? Are your towers and cities bigger than the voice of God? This God of ours sets the nations aside with the ease of a child's toy. This God of ours sits above the fray and watches. Protect us, O God. Strengthen your people. Bless your people. You alone are our God. Amen. Our final song today is indescribable. And so we'll let Jansen lead us in that. of heights to the depths of the sea creation revealing your majesty from the colors of fall to the fragrance
And so hear the benediction. May the God who places the stars in the sky, who knows us each by name, the God of storms and the God of sunshine, remind us that we are not alone and that God is here through all of it. Let us go in God's peace this day. Amen.